In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Corval to manage performance for Voice over IP, clearly a critical application for many businesses. When you first plug Corval in, we automatically discover network flows and applications on the network, and this is a critical process for VoIP. The breadth of protocols involved is large, and here, we're discovering H.323, RTCP, Skinny, and SIP, for example. Corval discovers the singling protocols first, tracks the state of all calls in progress, and from here, discovers negotiated RTP ports and immediate traffic. This means Corval's automatically delivering value from the moment you install the platform and continues to self-manage itself as your VoIP infrastructure evolves. Now the next step in the discovery process is to automatically publish this data to dashboards. Here you can see a number of dashboards down the left that have been populated. By clicking on the VoIP dashboard, you are given an overview of the VoIP service. Users like Corval dashboards for a number of reasons. First, they're automatically created and self-managed, and therefore remain relevant as your VoIP infrastructure evolves. Secondly, they're live. All Corval analytics are calculated and published in real time and this enables you to have a real-time and current view of the service as it's currently being delivered. And thirdly, the key analytics to manage the service are published on the dashboard. Down the left here, looking at call volume metrics, including total call request, registration request, and the maximum concurrent calls observed by the Corval platform. This is important data for planning the capacity of VoIP and for structure elements. Next. Corval is reporting the volume of failed calls. The most common complaint received by voice operations are calls that fail to complete, calls that are randomly terminated, and calls with dead air and no indication of progress to the user. For failed calls, this dashboard includes a number of elements to help paint the full picture. For example, here we have a visualization showing the total completed calls, as well as the percentage of failed calls. Here, at a glance, you can quickly see there is a worryingly large slice of failed calls. To the right of this, we're reporting a breakdown of the failed calls by their singling errors. This enables you to identify if the errors are dominated by a single recurring issue, or in this case, a large number are dominated by 487 errors. But equally, there's 486 errors, some 422 errors, and still a significant number of 604 errors. Now, failed calls are important but so are the calls that do complete. For these calls, the voice operations team ideally wants to understand the actual user experience of the call. To the right here, Corval is reporting the percentage of calls that are achieving good MOS scores versus average MOS scores versus poor MOS scores, where poor MOS scores are any calls defined with a MOS score less than 3.5. Corval calculates MOS by measuring the jitter and loss of every packet for every call in real time. From these measurements, Corval uses the E-model to report the MOS score. This provides 100% coverage for the actual user call and user experience. Other approaches can't scale to provide this measurement and resort to injecting test packets or test calls, which is clearly not the actual user experience. So Corval scales to provide these measurements for 15,000 concurrent calls on a single appliance. And below this, we're visualizing the total volume of RTP traffic, as well as time series of when the poor and average MOS scores are being experienced. This enables you to understand quickly if there's been a spike in poor or average user experience for the service. From at any point on this dashboard, you can click through to initiate an investigation of failed calls or calls experiencing poor call quality. Let's start an investigation into a failed call. By clicking on one of these failed call records, this will take you to a view of the entire call record. These call records are stored locally on Corval, but even more critically, can be published to any external reporting system. Corval's streaming analytics supports publishing all VoIP metrics, singling data, and call records into any type of data visualization products, including Splunk, SQL databases, big data systems like Hadoop, custom in house products like a customer portal or even reporting servers, for example. This enables our users to consume and report on VoIP performance using third-party tools of their choice. Now, the Corval call record here includes many data elements that are relevant, including the timestamp of when the call was initiated, 
the caller number, the call number, and client and server port IDs, as well as the actual error status code that caused the call to fail. At this point for this call, you can click on this timestamp and jump directly to the underlying captured packets. However, before I do that, I want to show you another common workflow. Let's say the CEO has just escalated a complaint about yet another poor VoIP experience where he had to terminate the conference call with his or hers board. A quick way to jump on this complaint is to initiate a search in Corval with either the phone number or the username. Corval is indexing all fields in the call record to enable searching on the called number, the caller name, or the calling number. For example, I'll put in the CEO's extension number and start a search to find all recent calls from this extension. Here we've returned all call records from this extension, and a critical piece of information that they contain is the call ID. By searching on the call ID, you will get the full life cycle of the call, including all associated messages with the call. So this includes the invite, trying OK, the RTP traffic, and the end of the call, including the call record and any records for each segment of the call. And again, from here, you're one click away from the underlying packet data. We are now looking at all the RTP packets for the call. The critical measurements here include RTP jitter and RTP loss. It's jitter and loss that Corval uses to calculate the actual MOS score. Here we're seeing no RTP loss reported for this call, but quite high jitter, including jitter up here at 58 milliseconds, all the way up to over 250 milliseconds of jitter. This can definitely explain why the CEO is complaining. Now the next measurement that we report is all packets that have not been properly marked with the QoS marking. In this case, we're reporting all packets not marked as EF. All RTP packets should be marked as expedited forwarding to keep the jitter and loss guaranteed to be low. Here you can select some of these packets. And in the table below here, we are now looking at these packets including their DSCP markings. In this table below, we are seeing timestamps and packets for every RTP packet in the call. And here we have the DSCP markings for each of the packets. And here's a packet that's not been properly marked and is sitting at default value of zero. By capturing all the packets with full decode, we get information including codec, jitter calculations, and most importantly in this case, the IP address and port numbers of the talker and listener of the call. Finding this detail one click after searching on a phone number is a massive time savings and enables users to quickly and confidently respond to the CEO's complaint.